So in this lesson, we're going to do some examples of problems where you have to use multiple uh, properties to solve. So it's not just, you know, a simple distribution problem. It might require distribution and combining like terms. And so what you do first is you look at the problem very carefully and you see what's wrong with it. Why is it not simplified? Um, is it just because there are parentheses in the way? Are there like terms that need to com be combined? But you should come up with a list of things that you want to or need to do to make the um, equation simplified. You don't have to write them down or anything, just come up with them in your head. And then come up with a plan, like which one of those things are you going to take care of first? Are you going to get rid of all the parentheses first? Or are you going to combine like terms first? Um, and once you come up with your plan, you actually execute your plan and actually do the distributions and you combine the like terms and you do whatever you need to do. Um, but when you go through the process, don't forget the order of operations, all right? Because those are always in play. You don't violate the order of operations. Um, and you have to be very conscious of that. And the only thing you can do to, to kind of go around the order of operations is the distributive property. Um, but everything else, you got to make sure to keep the order of operations in mind. So let's do some examples. We'll start off with something that's relatively simple. Okay. Um, I have 3 plus 8 times the quantity of x plus 4. All right. So it's not just a plain distribution problem. There's that plus 3 in the way. And so I have to make a decision. And I have to think, well, I have to get rid of the parentheses first. And then that x in the end needs to be in the front of the problem. And that plus 3 is in the front. So I have to get rid of the parentheses. And I have to move that plus 3. And I'm fairly certain that there are going to be terms that I need to combine. So my strategy is to get rid of the parentheses first. And then I can rearrange and combine as necessary. So now the question is, what do I distribute? Do I distribute 8, or do I add 3 plus 8 first and then distribute that product, or that sum? Well, if I remember the order of operations, I'm supposed to apply multiplication before I deal with addition. Addition is like the last thing I do. So I don't distribute 8, 11. I'm going to distribute 8. Another way to think of it as, um, is as I can move this plus 3 to the back with the commutative property, and then there's no issue, right? So um, just because it's up here doesn't mean I'm going to add first. Like, don't do that. That violates the order of operations. You're not allowed to do that. So I'm going to sprinkle first to get rid of my parentheses, because, you know, got to get rid of the parentheses. And so the 3 plus stays there, and this becomes 8x plus 8 times 4. And that is me using the distributive property. Now, to simplify that, of course, I have to do 8 times 4, which is, I believe, 32. Let's just make sure. Yes, it's 32. And that is a substitution. Now, I got rid of the parentheses, yay, but then this 8x needs to be in the front, and that 3 and that 32 have to be combined. So I want to swap these two terms. I want to put the 8x in the front, and then plus the 3, and plus the 32. And that is my commutative of addition. And so now, I'm going to combine the 3 and the 32 to get 8x plus 35, and that's substitution. Now, when these problems become more complicated, I want to be able to check them with my trusted graphing calculator. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually type in the original problem, 3 plus 8 times x plus 4. Okay. Now, the way this works is each of these lines is an equivalent expression. Okay, meaning if I plug in a 1 for x, a 2 for x, a 3 for x, I'm going to get the same output every single time because they're supposed to be equal. And so if I did all of these steps correctly, every single one of these is going to graph to be the exact same thing. Now, I can also use a table um, if I want to, and I'm going to actually use the table. And all I really need to check at first is the, the original problem and my answer. Because if these two things are identical, that means I did it right. So if I type in both t equations, uh, the original is y1, the answer is y2, and I go to the table and I check, and my tables are identical. At 3, they're both 59. At 4, they're both 67. At 5, they're both 75. That means that these two are mathematically equivalent. Now, it doesn't mean this is simplified. I just have to double check to make sure it doesn't violate anything. So everything that can be added has been added. The variables first, numbers at the back. So yes, this one is indeed correct. Now, if I find out that this is wrong, what I can do is I can check all my intermediate steps in the exact same way. So if I suspect that I made a mistake distributing, I can check this step with the original to make sure I did that right. Um, and you can literally go through each step to see if you, you did them correctly. Um, that's very time consuming. So at first, just check the original with your answer to make sure you did it right. And if you did, you can move on. But if you did something wrong, 
then you can go through your work and figure out exactly what line you made the mistake in by using your calculator. All right, let's do another example. Um, let's look at x plus 3 plus 5 plus 3x. All right, so if I have this one, I got to get rid of the parentheses. And if I look at these parentheses, well, they really aren't contributing anything. I'm not like multiplying anything out or anything uh, on the outside, so it's not distribution. Um, but I really kind of don't like the x and the 3 together. But if I put the 3 and the 5 together, I can add that to get a single number and eliminate the parentheses altogether. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the 3 with the 5 using my trusty associative property of addition. And then I can use substitution to turn that 3 plus 5 into an 8. And remember, as soon as you get this number, whatever's in the parentheses, into a single quantity or a single term, it can go away. And then if I look at this, I can say, well, I want to put this x with that x, so I have to commute everything, meaning rearrange. And then I can combine the x and the 3x to a 4x plus 8 using combined like terms, which is a shortcut that I'm allowing you to take. All right. So once again, if I want to check, I can graph this one with this one and look at the tables and make sure they're identical. If they are, then yay. If not, then I can step by step and check and see which one I made a mistake on. Now those two examples both have addition only in them, so let's do one with the subtraction. So let's look at 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 5. And so then I think, okay, well, what am I really distributing? Because what's wrong with this expression is that I have this in parentheses, and there's a multiplication on the outside, so it means distribution. And I have to decide, am I distributing a 3, or am I distributing a negative 3? And in this case, I'm really distributing a negative 3. So in order to make it obvious what I'm actually distributing, I'm going to make that a plus a negative, so it's a definition of subtraction. If I just distributed 3, um, it's not going to be equivalent. Um, because I'm subtracting off this entire quantity, and so I have to make sure that I, I do that properly. And the best way to is to say, make that a plus and negative. So then it becomes obvious when I need to sprinkle. The 2x is still there. Negative 3 times 2x is, well, negative 3 times 2x. And then that subtraction carries over. And then I have a negative 3 times a 5, and that is the distributive property. So now I'm going to go ahead and simplify all these multiplications. 2x plus negative 6x minus negative 15, and that's substitution. And so now I need to fix this because I do not like that, minus a negative. Um, and I can't commute subtraction anyway, and I need to, oh, I don't need to commute though, never mind. So if I look at this, woohoo, I'm almost done because if I have 2x plus a negative 6x, I have a, a negative 4x by combining like terms and I have negative 4x minus negative 15, and I don't like the minus a negative, as I said earlier, and I can change that now to a plus 15 using my definition of subtraction. So if I look at this answer, the variable terms first, the coefficients up there, the 15's back at the end, and my signs are simplified. Now all I have to do is check to make sure I did this correctly. So I'm gonna go to y equals, and I'm only going to check the original with my answer at first. And if I make a mistake, I can go back and check the intermediate step. So 2x minus 3, open parentheses, 2x minus 5 is the original. And I'm going to double check to make sure I typed that in correctly. And I did. And then I'm going to check my answer, negative 4x plus, oopsie, wrong button. Ah. Um, negative 4x plus 15. And then if I check my tables, they better be identical, and they did, and they are. So yay! So that means this is indeed the box it off, half a face answer, right? So the key to this kind of problem is, is realizing that I'm not distributing a 3, I'm distributing a negative 3. So I changed that to a plus a negative 3, and then I went and distributed and combined my like terms as normal. All right, so let's make this... Uh, a little bit worse, and this is the ugliest example I'm going to give you, and this is the last example. Um, so let's see, I have 5 times 3x plus 7 minus 3 times 2x minus 9. All right, so obviously I have multiple instances of the x's that are going to be combined, but before I can do that, I have to get rid of the parentheses. And how do I get rid of parentheses? When I have a number on the outside, well, these are going to be distribution problems. And so the first thing I need to think about is I'm distributing a 5 here 
And what am I distributing there? Well, from the last example, we saw that I'm not really distributing a 3. I'm distributing a negative 3. So to make that obvious, I'm going to use my definition of subtraction to rewrite that as plus a negative. And so since I'm going to distribute twice, I'm going to do it in the exact same step. So 5 times 3x plus 5 times 7 plus negative 3 times 2x minus negative 3 times 9. That's the distributive property. If you're going to use the same property in a step multiple times, you can just, uh, just do it all at once, as opposed to doing that in two separate steps. And so now I can do all the multiplications. 5 times 3 is 15, and 5 times 7 is 35. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6x, and then minus a negative 27. And so then I did a substitution. And so if I look at this, um, I don't like the minus a negative, and I am going to have to commute here because I want to put the 15x with the negative 6 and the 35 with the minus the negative 27, but I can't do that if there's a subtraction in the way. So I need to rewrite it so that it only has addition. And so that's the definition of subtraction because minus a negative is a plus. And so now I can rearrange to my heart's content. So I have 15x plus negative 6x plus 35 plus 27. And that's my commutative property of addition. So everything is where I need it to be. And then I just need to do 15 minus 6x, 15x minus 6x, which is 9x. And then 35 plus 27, which is a plus 62. And that is uh, combining like terms and substitution. I'll allow you to do those two at the same time. And so let's double check to make sure we did this right. OK, so how do I check it? I go to y equals, and I type in the original for y1. 5 times 3x plus 7 minus, oh, I've typed in as y2. Eh, doesn't matter. 3 times 2x minus 9. So that's the original problem is one of them. And then the other one is going to be the answer, which is 9x plus 62. Now, if I did this right, remember the table should be identical because the whole point is that these two expressions are equivalent. One is just the simpler version. So if I go to the table and I look, and yes, indeed, the tables are identical. So that meant that I simplified it correctly. So I can put my box around my answer and my happy face.